finally moving away from the North Carolina coast. Good afternoon. I'm Allison Lottis and while it moves out, there is unbelievable video coming into our newsroom showing the torrential rains. A storm surge covered Ocracoke Island in just a matter of minutes. The National Weather Service declared a flash flood emergency and on Hatteras, just further north on the Outer Banks, a similar scene. Listen to that wind. This is where the eye made a brief landfall. Terrifying images taken right outside the Lee Robinson General Store. Look at that parking lot, absolutely flooded. The water rising rapidly from that storm surge. Power outages still in the hundreds of thousands, though they are dropping in South Carolina. There are more than 200,000 customers along the North Carolina coast who are in the dark as we speak. Our dedicated team has been covering the storm since well before it hit. Meteorologist Jacqueline Shear is here with us with news on the hurricane's landfall, and reporter Ken Lemon is standing by in Wrightsville Beach. But we start with meteorologist John Aarons live for us in Atlantic Beach. John, you're finding some devastating damage to a hotel there that was already blasted during Florence. Absolutely, Allison. We are at the Bogue Shores Motel. For those that come down to Atlantic Beach, we're about a mile from the causeway. Let me step behind and show you what happened here. We have, look at the sheathing all across this hotel, completely ripped off. All of the rafters, the roofing material went right through here into the pool. There are still chunks of roofing in this pool. Some of it's going to the bottom, others is floating up right to the top. And it's very difficult to walk around here because there's just nails around, lots of boards, and they spread all across this parking lot, actually even into the other side of this hotel. What happened here? Well, judging by what I can see as far as the damaged path and looking around at other structures, I do believe we had a tornado here. Uh, we certainly saw some strong winds right around 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning for sure as hurricane force winds came in. We do know that everyone here, as far as we can tell, has, is safe. Uh, they are just completely distraught over losing uh, everything, at least in many of these cases. We also saw a lot of widespread flooding from some of that very heavy rain. In fact, up and down Charlotte Street, that is completely impassable in this area. Allison. John, thank you. Now I'm here with meteorologist Jacqueline Shear in Severe Weather Center 9. Technically, Dorian made landfall just a few hours ago. Yeah, at 835, it technically made landfall at Cape Hatteras, and it wasn't a long-lasting event, though. Landfall is technically when the exact center of the storm passes over land. So this was the third landfall overall for this storm, but the first in the continental United States. And you can see just how quickly it moved away after that. Made landfall as a category one, winds about 90 miles an hour. And you can see compared to the crawl that it's been doing for the past few days, it's now picking up some speed, moving away from the Carolina coast at about 17 miles an hour. So some big improvements there. Now that's not to say it's over, of course. We're still dealing with some storm surge as well as those rain bands along the coast here all throughout that region in addition to of course some of those winds most of which at this point are tropical storm force instead of hurricane force as that center of the storm moves further and further away by 8 p.m. it has moved quite a bit farther away tonight so we are pretty much done with this storm we are done with Dorian finally and then as it continues on we'll be out of our hair very quickly but of course we do still have some rain chances on on the way over the next few days for our region. We're going to take a look at those coming up in just a few minutes. First, let's turn things over now to Ken Lemon, who has been down at Wrightsville Beach over the past few days and has some encouraging signs there today. Yeah, Jacqueline, you will be hard pressed if you didn't know what happened in the last few days to believe that a hurricane passed right through this area. This here looks like just an ordinary day at the beach. You see people out here uh, enjoying themselves. Not as many as you might see if the hurricane wasn't here, but still quite a few, all things considered. I want to show you some video from earlier today. About 2,500 residents had to evacuate, and they're all trying to get back on this morning when they were told that the evacuation had been lifted. A lot of them very concerned about what they might find. They heard the winds last night. I spoke with one guy who told me he was very worried waking up to the sounds of that hurricane whipping the hotel that he stayed in overnight when he got back. He was glad to see there was little damage done here on Riceful Beach. Uh, he did tell me about those eerie moments, those three days we had to leave his home. Glued in front of the TV to see how much devastation you're going to come back to. You know, I mean, that's a, you know, uh, not a pleasant thought. 
And as I can we, imagine. And as we did come home, we found roof damage, so that's discomforting. You see the waves out there. One of the things I was told by a guy waiting out there is the surfers itching to get back out here. And they're out catching waves right now. Life resuming to normal for a lot of folks here. I drove around the area also to visit some of those roads that were blocked, congested, overflown last night and did not find a lot of damage. A lot of the water that was on the road has evaporated at this time. They have a few areas that they're still trying to uh, fix. But overall, the damage appears outside of the couple of tornadoes on the neighboring counties appears to be minor. Allison. Ken, thank you. Five deaths in the United States have been tied to Dorian so far, but that number in the Bahamas is 30. And sadly, officials there expect that number to ultimately be much higher. The country's tourism minister says hundreds, if not thousands of people are still missing. Freeport's airport has been destroyed, slowing recovery efforts on Grand Bahama Island. That's where Dorian parked itself as a Category 5 hurricane for nearly two days. A team of doctors and nurses with Samaritan's Purse left the Piedmont Triad yesterday to set up a mobile hospital in the Bahamas. The emergency field hospital can be set up in a matter of hours to be a fully functional medical center. It's one of four that can be deployed to the worst hit areas. We're going out into very austere areas, places that have absolutely nothing, like the Bahamas right now has been totally devastated, leveled. And we're going out there and being able to pop up a hospital. 16 doctors and nurses will remain in the Bahamas for a minimum of three and a half weeks.